Hey, I thought I'd really quickly document what I've got set up here for um, uh, my X-Carve. Um, I don't have an ideal vacuum solution right now. I've got this little shot vac and standard hose. And then I have this attachment here, which goes into this mount. And then it's able to slide and lock to the side. Everything right now is a little hard doing one-handed. And anyway, slides and locks. Um, then I've got a pin mount here. Uh, this is on Thingverse. This is on Thingverse. This top cover is on Thingverse. This is a scope and pin mount. Um, I does I redesigned this based on someone else's design. This is someone else's design. This is someone else's design. Vacuum hose goes here, and the back shop vac gets turned on. And there's an exhaust hose that goes along the back wall. Um, everything's standard to the new X Carve model as of October, so it was like just released as far as October. Then I've got the X controller here, which I've done a good amount of customization to. Um, it doesn't have the USB port on the front. It has a switch, if you can tell. And then I've got a uh, IoT relay connected to the uh, spindle PWM pin. And then everything else is pretty, is pretty standard uh, for the back of the connection on the X-Carve. You know, all the uh, uh, relay switch, or all the... Um, uh, Bump switches, limit switches, they're all there. Um, and I'm going to show you real quick what I've done with the X controller. So I click on the X controller, and while it's booting up, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Let's just show you over here. I'm using CNC JS, which is a web application, because I didn't like passing all of my information uh, over the web. Uh, for the CNC controller because if I lost internet connection uh, my job would terminate or if I lost network connectivity so there's a lot of points of failure as far as the network goes so move this to the side. so what I've got in here and it's a little bit of a mess right now but I'll go ahead and separate it out just a little bit so move this up to the top okay so what I've got here are these two wires over here. This right here is a DC to DC uh, uh, step down uh, regulator. Uh, so it steps to 24 volts for this power supply down to 5 volts. There's a potentiometer, this little silver button or this gold button on the top. And you can get these just about anywhere. It's DC DC uh, converter or switch regulator. Uh, very efficient. Uh, it's very cold. It's cold to the touch. Uh, and uh, when it's running the Raspberry Pi, it still stays cold. This is a Raspberry Pi 3 inside of a acrylic case. And uh, the only things I've got connected to it right now are power, a shutdown button that is activated by a Python script. So when I want to shut down the Raspberry Pi, I just click this. And I have another button coming that has LEDs on it so I can see when the Pi is powered off and a few other neat tricks. I uh, just don't have that in yet. Uh, then it's got heat sinks on it, not that it really needs it or will get any benefit of it in this case, but this is just a nice curl case. It gets held in a place pretty good when the e-stop is installed. Um, so I don't really have it screwed down or mounted really in any way, but it makes it nice and easy to get to. Uh, I have this USB cable just coiled up in here, uh, which connects to the Gerbil shield or Gerbil board more so. Um, and that allows me to power everything. So it starts up really, really quick. Once it starts up, I start getting pings from, from it. And then I've got passwordless login set up so I can come over here, start logging in. And I've also got a little strange uh, script set up. And I can go ahead and run HTOP. And I've got some neat tricks in here so that, well, let me go ahead and exit. So reason I like using screens is if I lose connectivity so I can hit yes or just hit enter. 
I've got an update script that I can do to, to do basically just type up date and it will update everything. Um, what I really want to show you is the web interface for it. So I've got some designs I've, I've done recently and let's see, I'm not sure. I'll go ahead and load this little torture test it did. And I built this trouble, uh, this um, little uh, torture test it's loading right now and you can see the processing power that's required. It's only running on one core for running it. But it generally loads pretty, there it is. Okay, this was run, made in uh, mesh cam uh, with a model from Onshape. I prefer recently using this one, which is made by um, Kirimoto. So it's generated with Kirimoto, which is this web interface that'll allow you to do um, uh, meshing. So I can slice it, and it will do a roughing, a finishing, it will do drilling. Uh, it doesn't like this because I scaled it, so I'm going to go ahead and turn off Pocket. So now it should do it. So for some reason, when I scale it, it doesn't like pocket. But anyway, it's doing, you can see it's doing these little meshes right here. Uh, and then it's roughing on the top. And I can, uh, it's facing on the top. I can turn off facing over here. And then I can go ahead and slice it again. And it's hard to tell, but it's no longer doing the facing. So I've got that. That works pretty good. Um, not bad for a web interface. My goal is to get everything so it's web interface. This is one of the torture tests I generated with it a while ago. Um, and it just shows some of the features that this has. So I can move my gantry around. I'll go ahead and unlock it. And then I can move it here. I've also got keyboard input so I can And I can increase the steps, so I can do, let's go ahead and increase that to 20, and and it thinks it's home right now. I'm going to go ahead and home it. I'll reset, unlock, home. Okay, reset. So it's controlling all of this over with the Raspberry Pi. So if I like lose network connectivity, it doesn't change anything for me. Um, it still cuts. Uh, I don't get to preview, but it still cuts. And it will finish out the design because it's all cached onto this Raspberry Pi. So as long as I've sent it there, and I can still pause and play and reset and e-stop all from the unit here all enclosed um, and it's completely independent from this so if I run a job like if I were to start running this job and uh, you know, just you know, walk away and let my computer die or close it or um, you know, whatever uh, as long as this sustains power then it's good to go uh, which is why I like this uh, CNC JS it's, it's been really good I've done quite a few jobs it's been really reliable I've also got spindle control set up, and I had to do a few tricks with the current version, which is 1.6.8. So if I load my settings right now, and I'll scroll through these. So there should be my inline. Let's go ahead and load. Get all my parameters. Okay. Start blocks. 
Okay, so I had to set my spindle startup block here, so this sets the spindle speed. And I've got the spindle off on the spindle right now. And I've got the relay box off too. So I'll go ahead and turn the relay off, or relay on, and I'll go ahead and turn on and off the spindle. So I've got spindle control over here. And if you've heard that, and I'm just for save it. So I've got it on over here, so the spindle will click on and you'll hear it. So I'm going to go ahead and click start. So it controls it, and if when I run the G-code, and I don't want to run it right now because I really don't want to crash anything. Um, when I run the G-code, it will turn on the spindle and then turn off the spindle as predicted as long as it's in the G-code. So you'll have to sometimes you'll have to set a first and last line or turn on the spindle, then run the job, and then the last line of the code, just make sure that you've added or it was added to turn off the spindle and you're good to go. Otherwise, you just manually turn it off here, there. Um, and whenever you're changing the bit, I usually turn off the relay because uh, I can see the red lights and it doesn't put as much wear on this switch on the uh, on the spindle. Um, but yeah. And this, as far as this relay goes, it's wired in. There's two screws that are on the board uh, on the power supply that supply power to the entire uh, gerbil shield so I'm screwed onto those screw terminals that are on the power supply so that's where I'm getting the 24 volts it's down under the gerbil shield right now directly to the power supply so I'm just feed it on to there's actually extra screw terminals and I'm just using the three negative and three positive and the shield's only using one of those sets so there's two other sets and one of the sets just goes to this and powers this so it's all enclosed it stays really cool um, it's got plenty of power I think this will do four amps um, but uh, yeah and it's nice smooth current uh, you've got to dial it in with a, a voltmeter beforehand and then you're good to go um, and as far as getting the setup with CNCJS, I've written in their wiki how to do everything. So if you just go to installation Raspberry Pi setup, uh, it mentions Kirimoto in here, how to do all the setup. There's a few things that aren't in here that I may add later, uh, like my little login script that does Xcarve. Um, hell, I'll just go ahead and show you real quick. Um, what that looks like. So here's that. Let's go ahead and open the new sense. Oh, and here's the shutdown button. So it's just a standard Python script. Uh, I create the script, and then I have it working here. And I'll try and post this, but I'll go ahead and record it because you know never any promises. And then I have this auto start option one running as a cron job and it just does you know, at, at reboot when it starts up it'll um, it'll start up the script and then it puts out the logs for any of it so when when you start up the at reboot basically is when you reboot the Pi or when you start up the Pi it'll run that, that cron job and so it runs um, as soon as you start up and it just waits there um, depending on which script, which I've gotten this top one working, um, then uh, it, it'll either wait for an interrupt or, or just wait for a pin to be detected. And the other cool thing is, so the pin I've got it wired to, which is um, GPIO3, I believe, uh, set as five on the board. Uh, this is set to true the true pin numbers so yeah it's five so that's the actual so it's this this first red one sorry so that's how I've got it wired up so this the, on this side this red one and this blue one which are spaced it's hard to tell but they're spaced kind of hard. I'm sorry for the terrible image quality. 
but there is a space between this blue and this red right here. And this black and this red back here, these two silicone wires that aren't twisted, those are for power, these are for the uh, interrupt. Um, and whenever you turn off the Pi, like if you accidentally bumped it, you don't have to power down the entire unit. You bump it again, or you just leave this on and you turn that off. Just hit it, I don't recommend it, but this will basically turn it back on again. Um, as long as it has power. So usually I'll hit this, wait about 30 seconds, and then turn off the X controller, and it, it will safely shut down the Raspberry Pi and this. So another alternative would be to put in a big capacitor bank, and whenever you lost power, the capacitor bank would give it enough time to shut down the Pi, and it would trigger that shutdown sequence to like drop that pin. But I haven't set that up. This is fine. Um, and I usually am able to quickly log into it anyway, so a lot of times I'll just come in here and I'll do sudo shutdown. Um, and that does, that does just fine for shutting down the Pi. So I usually, uh, um, I can do it either way. Um, Anyway, so that's how I've got things set up. I really like it. Um, the Raspberry Pi is fairly inexpensive, and really all the components here, maybe $60 for additional components, uh, plus some, some smaller stuff I had laying around, which I actually had this laying around. These run about $5 to $10. The case was $10. Raspberry Pi was like $35 or $40, and then the X controller. Um, so that's what I've got set up for my X-Carve, and I just wanted to share, because it's, it's a good setup. It's taken a little while to research. Um, and this right here is a IoT relay board made by a fantastic company, which I cannot remember the name of. But if you search IoT relay, you'll find this board, and it's just, it's phenomenal. It allows you to set plugs for moment, for, uh, normally on and normally off so this everything I have is normally on but if I you know say wanted you know lights to go out or something to click off I, I have a lot of options I, I, just, I just can't say anything else good about the board it does feel a little inexpensive but seems reliable it seems pretty well built and uh, it allows me to kick on my uh, router and my little shop vac um, and uh, all from from here so it works out pretty well anyway this is probably run a little bit long um, but oh yeah I was gonna show you the profile so here's the profile script top does updates then I've got this X carve which this is from uh, the guys at Adafruit they built a little wireless uh, inventables easel, um, it's wireless easel access, and that they put that together and I, I'm borrowing it from them just to put in because I like the aesthetics of it in, in my system. So I put that in there for me uh, just to kind of enjoy. And then I've got this kind of auto login, so when I log in it'll run screen, um, which is nice and lightweight, and we'll pop in a screen session. So if I lose connectivity and I'm running updates, it's not the end of the world, the updates should run and I can reconnect to the screen session if I need to. Um, yeah, so this is my X-Carve uh, with a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it's really great. And uh, if you guys have any questions, you know, uh, just reply back to the post on the forum or, or message me on um, uh, YouTube and I'll, I'll try to get back to you. Hope you enjoy, thumbs up if you do. Thank you much.